first uh, is, of course, the Baltic Sea uh, that we all are aware of. And uh, I heard that someone was asking why the course is called Baltic Ocean Literacy School. Uh, basically, it is because the ocean literacy is one of the important knowledge gaps that needs to be filled. Uh, and this has been identified by many global networks and at the UN level. Uh, it has appeared very uh, clearly that in order to save the global ocean, we need to increase the knowledge about uh, it and about environmental problems related to it. Uh, and we have decided that we can, uh, at our level, increase the knowledge about the Baltic Sea, of course. So um, as a part of the global ocean, we will try to do that as much as we can. And um, we will talk about the Baltic Sea uh, mostly throughout this course uh, in general. And uh, look at the Baltic. It is such a beautiful uh, water body. Uh, of course, you will have a separate lecture about it and uh, how uh, the Baltic uh, Sea is different from many other uh, water bodies and uh, other seas in the, in the world ocean. Uh, but this one is a snapshot from April 2004. Uh, and it demonstrates the variety of the Baltic Sea, uh, both in terms of climate, in terms of landscape, in terms of geography. But I will not stop on that. So it can be also extremely beautiful uh, underneath the seawaters. It can be very lively and colorful. Uh, it can be also murky and uh, very depressing with overgrown by filamentous algae, uh, like at this uh, slide. And uh, during this course, we will address, of course, why and how, what are the reasons uh, for that. And uh, I would like now to move into uh, the discussion, what's going, what's going on with the Baltic Sea. And um, I will start with introducing the uh, Coalition Clean Baltic. Uh, you have heard already today quite many things about us, but what uh, the, the CCB, what the Coalition Clean Baltic is about. It is an umbrella network of uh, 27 environmental NGOs uh, from 11 nations of the Baltic Sea region. And they are all presented at this slide. Uh, and sorry, the slide is a little bit outdated. It says that we are celebrating 30 years, but it's actually already 33 uh, to come in June this year. Uh, unfortunately, the, the past three years we were so hectic that there was no time to uh, properly celebrate our 30. And uh, we are still in the same mood of, well, one can say celebrating, uh, but probably it's more about reviving and re-establishing uh, Coalition Clean Baltic. You also see uh, that we have over 1.5 million people behind the organizations that form the, Bal uh, the Coalition Clean Baltic, and we are very proud of, them, of that. You can also see as well that we have big and small NGOs that are represented with their logos on the top of this slide. We have, for example, uh, WWF Sweden, we have uh, NABU, we have uh, BUND Friends of the US Germany, we have Swedish and Danish Societies for Nature Conservation, and those are the big founders of uh, CCB, but we also have plenty of smaller uh, NGOs on the eastern side uh, of the Baltic Sea mainly in all countries of the catchment area. Uh, at the bottom, uh, you also see our main donors. I will not stop on uh, all of them. Uh, and if you would have any questions, of course, I'm ready to answer those. But uh, those range from uh, European, global, national, uh, as well as private. So Coalition Clean Baltic, uh, in our organization, we have a vision to reach good ecological conditions of the Baltic Sea, ensuring its marine and terrestrial ecosystems are able to maintain and sustain biodiversity while also supporting sustainable development in the Baltic Sea region. And we work through advocacy, uh, addressing international public opinion about various issues uh, on the Baltic Sea protection, both within as well as outside the region, so meaning at HELCOM or within EU as well as globally. We do work uh, through coordinated actions and field work. Uh, and through that, we are supporting also our member organizations uh, to undertake specific actions in field projects. 
covering wide range of issues and we are also working in environmental uh, information education and other activities where we gather produce and distribute information about environmental problems of the baltic sea region uh, and we work through four uh, major working areas uh, and those are the same as the Baltic Action Plan directions of work. So they address biodiversity and nature conservation, they address eutrophication, they address hazardous substances and litter, and they address maritime activities. And I will stop at each of those to give you a snapshot of uh, what specific work we do uh, in those working areas. So we will start with working area biodiversity and please the next one. Uh, so, there are a couple of examples in each of those working areas, uh, what kind of work we do. And uh, for example, this is about our work to save uh, our only Baltic Sea whale, uh, harbor porpoise. You will hear about that uh, within the course of this course. Uh, and this is just uh, one example of the activities that we have accomplished within the last year. And that was a petition uh, where we gathered now it's more than 120, I think, uh, signatures of uh, concerned residents uh, and citizens of uh, not only Baltic Sea countries, but uh, actually uh, across Europe. Uh, and this petition was delivered to EU Commissioner uh, on Environment and Marine, ma Maritime Issues. And uh, it is a call by residents of the Baltic Sea region to, uh, well, strengthen the protection of the harbor purpose. Another example is the work on protecting uh, vulnerable uh, species, different species, and uh, this one particularly is about protecting the Baltic salmon. Uh, but this is not the only uh, protected species, of course, we work with in the biodiversity and nature conservation. Uh, and this uh, slide represents our activities in Belarus quite far uh, upstream, actually hundreds of kilometers from the Baltic Sea, where we protect the spawning grounds uh, and restore those uh, in order to improve the population of uh, Baltic Salmonids uh, in the Namanus River. Uh, and the next slide, please. And again, uh, it demonstrates that we are working not only locally, but uh, we are working again with the European Commission with yet another uh, petition that was delivered to EU, EU Commissioner. And uh, this time it is not about salmon, it is about protection of European eel. The next working area is working area eutrophication, as I mentioned already before, and uh, there we work with reducing nutrient inputs. Uh, and basically, this is a very good uh, slide demonstrating what uh, nutrient inputs are about, because you see a very patchy uh, uh, land cover uh, with a lot of uh, various activities ongoing there. And most probably one may recognize that one of the most important activities here is uh, agriculture. Uh, and you can see also a plum of uh, estuary waters, the, the discharge of uh, River Vistula actually into the Baltic Sea, one of the seven big rivers bringing a lot of uh, sediments into the Baltic Sea and draining through a vast catchment. Uh, just to give you an understanding of the scale of the catchment of Vistula River, basically, if you think about Poland, Poland is divided between two big rivers. One is Vistula, another one is Odra. So 50%, well, approximately 50% of Polish uh, drainage area uh, lays within the Vistula catchment area. So uh, a lot of different kinds of, uh, well, contaminants, let's put it this way, are uh, collected and drained through uh, this river into the Baltic Sea. And uh, obviously, one of those contaminants are, on one hand, not as uh, seem to be not as dangerous like nitrogen and phosphorus, but uh, they actually cause uh, something that is called eutrophication. You will learn about that later on. Please, the next one. Uh, and eutrophication, of course, is not only caused by agriculture, it is also caused by uh, untreated wastewater, and we work also a lot with wastewater treatment. However, we are not able to address big wastewater treatment plants. Uh, we work on uh, 
smaller scale and scattered uh, settlements, uh, which also require uh, additional wastewater treatment in order to reduce the, again, amount of nutrients, but not only nutrients discharged into water bodies and through the, those water bodies into the Baltic Sea. Uh, and as I mentioned already, agriculture. So what, uh, what our work is focusing on? Of course, we cannot uh, by itself through the work of our organization reduce, for example, the number of fertilizers applied uh, by farmers in different countries. However, what we are doing and what we are working with is promotion of sustainable agriculture, promotion of the best practices, promotion, for example, of the organic agriculture, promotion of uh, uh, nutrient balanced fert uh, agriculture and promotion of uh, sustainable fertilization rates. Uh, and this is just a collection of the most recent events uh, that we do together with the farmers in order to uh, promote sustainable agriculture in the region. And those include various fairs, for example, uh, organic fair in the city of Lviv that happens every year. Uh, in Ukraine, and that also uh, is the Green Agriculture for a Sustainable Sea Conference that has happened within the last year, both in Ukraine as well as in Poland. Uh, within the same uh, eutrophication working area, we're also looking at uh, such challenges uh, of the current times as floods uh, and flood risks, and you will hear about that from Eva Lesh, uh, as Anna Oshakova has already presented to you. A uh, working area hazardous, that's uh, also a very important part of our work. Uh, and there we mostly uh, address such issues that, like, um, for example, uh, oh, sorry, I think we have jumped through. There was, uh, this is maritime, this is not hazardous. Yeah, hazardous is here. Uh, and here we work a lot with uh, the sources of uh, marine litter. Uh, and this slide represents uh, some pieces of our work, uh, including monitoring and more of marine litter on the coasts, including uh, such monitoring as uh, microplastics and microfibers. Uh, and one of the most recent work here is the report and activities connected to uh, now how to reduce the inputs of microfibers from textile. Uh, because uh, though in the water, everything, any kind of micro litter, microplastic may look like these fibers that are here on the slide. Uh, however, if you will look closer into those fibers and into those particles, you may be able to uh, distinct what comes from which source. And quite a lot of that actually comes from washing of the textile, washing of our clothes. Uh, so every time when you wear, for example, fleece jacket, please uh, do think uh, about it because fleece is one of the types of clothes that actually generate quite a lot of plastic fibers uh, being released into environment. Uh, and sorry, we jumped already to uh, this item before, and that is the next working area of uh, CCD. This is working area maritime, we, where we work, for example, a lot with maritime transport. Uh, and through this work, we are addressing uh, a lot of new sources and a lot of new uh, potential impacts uh, originating from maritime transport. And this is just one example. These are the ports that are handling fertilizers. Uh, and we have identified uh, that these particular uh, facilities, they can actually generate quite an uh, impressive amount of nutrients as well. Uh, so with, uh, the, um, with, with the total amount of uh, uh, fertilizers being handled in the Baltic ports in the range of approximately 7 million tons a year, uh, quite, a big, quite a bit of that uh, ends up also in the uh, nearby waters, uh, just by spilling, just by dusting, and we are working to reduce uh, this type of pollution. Uh, yet another and quite a new issue that we are also addressing, and that's again an example of CCB's work, uh, and that is an example of uh, our work at the global level. Uh, this is uh, work addressing underwater noise from shipping. Uh, this is yet another uh, problem, and you will hear about that, I think, also through this course. Uh, and this is an event that has happened in Lisbon uh, in June last year uh, at the well, uh, it was a side event at the UN Ocean Conference. 
uh, where we brought together people from different uh, sectors, including industry, including governments, and we talked how to reduce underwater noise, how to address shipping companies, how to uh, make shipping uh, sector understand that this is uh, an important and very, let's say, very emerging issue that has not been addressed uh, even a decade ago, but uh, it is becoming more and more uh, understood in the environmental, uh, well, not only in environmental circles, but uh, in general, for those who uh, protect the ocean, that uh, uh, the noise and the frequencies of uh, sound that are released by uh, maritime shipping are impacting also uh, various marine mammals, uh, various marine animals, including mammals. And then uh, another uh, type of measures or an, uh, another type of uh, activities we, that we also address in the working area maritime that actually Anna is leading. Uh, this is addressing uh, that all nature values should be ac uh, accessible for all. And this is an example of the activity that we did. And this is the bird watching tower that is constructed uh, in one of the protected areas. And that is done in order to enable uh, people even on wheelchair to be able to enjoy nature and to uh, be able to see uh, the nature values visit that uh, nature protected area by uh, adopted eco trail and uh, have the same fair access uh, to nature as all of us. Uh, and then uh, let's move to two more uh, examples of our work. Uh, and these are rather new, and these are uh, issues that we have addressed within the recent years, uh, and particularly, well, particularly in 2022. So these are, uh, these are something that uh, we haven't done uh, before, but uh, unfortunately last year we have faced, uh, well, we all understand we have faced a lot of challenges uh, with with the war uh, in the region but uh, this particular one that i'm addressing at this slide is not exactly uh, of that type but it is uh, an event that has happened as a legacy of old environmental contamination and unfortunately in our region we have different types of uh, environmental um, impact legacies uh, and this is the accident that has happened across Odra River, uh, the second biggest river in Poland and uh, the fourth biggest in terms of uh, water flow in the whole Baltic Sea catchment. Uh, and it has happened in late July and spanned across the whole August with uh, hundreds of tons of fish as well as other animals being found dead. Uh, and that was caused by a toxic contamination uh, that has happened uh, after release of a toxin by uh, a golden algae. And the bloom of that gold, golden algae was actually caused by the release of industrial waste into Odra River. So uh, unfortunately, it will take decades most probably to restore Odra to the, to the same pristine condition it had before uh, the accident has happened. And CCB was very active from the very beginning in uh, raising attention to this accident, but also uh, now we are involved in the administrative proceedings to find the, the polluter. Uh, and I am quite sure that Evalesh will tell you about that. But then uh, let's come to the consequences of the war in our region, please, the, new, the, the next one. Uh, since the very beginning of the war, since 24th of February, we started monitoring the uh, environmental consequences and impacts of uh, the war and military activities that uh, have unfortunately uh, hit our region and particularly hit, of course, Ukraine. Uh, and among those impacts that are listed here, of course, one can uh, for sure name the long-term health risks related to, sorry, finally my cat is now coming in. Um, uh, and this is not only about destroyed uh, water and waste wastewater supply, uh, and of course, uh, amounts of waste being generated uh, amount and uh, the, the scale of soil contamination by various uh, military objects and uh, armaments and weapons. Uh, this is also about uh, suffering of the nature protected areas and some of those nature 
protected areas were basically captured by uh, by the uh, Russian forces, and uh, they are now in a very threatened condition because nobody cares actually about them. Uh, so we are quite unfortunately sure that there will be short and long term uh, impacts, but there are also short and long long term solutions. And what we do within the CCB. Uh, is devising actions that will help to green recovery of Ukraine after the war is over and actually already now uh, introducing projects that may help people in Ukraine, for example, uh, those displaced people in the western part of Ukraine to adapt to the new conditions and to learn uh, something new, for example, sharing the knowledge about organic agriculture and uh, uh, some uh, hints and tips on how to uh, see the water quality and monitor water quality and uh, look after that. Uh, but uh, if you can pass to the next slide, uh, you can also uh, see that among our very concrete actions that we did uh, in Ukraine and uh, to support Ukrainians was to also launch a project, a crowdfunding project, uh, to support uh, a restoration of one uh, farm in Ukraine uh, in order to relaunch it after it's been destroyed by the war. And this is a very practical example of the work that we did. Uh, and finally, the last, my last slide is also about our guiding documents that we use in, in our work. and. Uh, uh, this is about our own document that we have developed uh, in 2019-2020 that's called Baltic Shadow Plan, and that was an input to another uh, very formal and official document that you can see also on this slide that is called Baltic Sea Action Plan. Uh, and this is the document, the second one particularly, uh, this is a set of concrete measures uh, on what we have to do in order to reach the Baltic Sea in a very good uh, ecological status. Uh, remember the picture that I showed at the very beginning, uh, the lively and colorful bottom of the Baltic Sea. Uh, however, the document that we have produced together with WWF and uh, Baltic environmental community contains our asks, what we demand from the governments uh, and what we see uh, the, 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 the best image of the Baltic Sea, what we see, what we need to do also, uh, going beyond uh, the national interests and going beyond what we uh, are bound to within different governmental limits and so on. So thank you very much.